Welcome to Homecoming Celebration with Gremlin State University and Southern University Shreveport. This is an opportunity where the Shreveport Regional Arts Council, in conjunction with Southern University, Shreveport, and Gremlin State University, decided that we were going to showcase local visual and performing artists from Northwest Louisiana, as well as other artists from around the country who are part of the Alumni Association with Gremlin State University and Southern University Shreveport. This is an opportunity for us to really showcase what we have done. This is something that started with the National Endowment for the Arts. It took about 18 months for us to do this. And with that, we have visual and performing artists. We have master classes. And what you're going to see with this documentary is the evidence of the work that we have done. This project is also encompassing a host of workshops. So we have workshops from a lot of different uh, individuals who are alumni of either Susla or Grambling. Myself will literally start off. Eric uh, Francis. I, I can't really teach somebody how to be an artist, but I, I can definitely teach them how to sharpen their skills. As well as Brenda Wimberly. Rhythm, scales, and where melody. But we have a host of other artists who will be on to discuss a lot of different topics that have a wealth of knowledge. I'm, I was born and raised in Brooklyn, New York. I'm of, I'm of Haitian descent. My parents are from Haiti. So it, it, it was like, a, it's, it's so interesting. Like English is almost my second language, really. Because, you know, I grew up in a bilingual household. Got uh, three brothers, three sisters. Wonderful life. One day, father decided we got to move. He had to move because he worked for General Motors and they were closing the plant down. And as he was looking for places, he found Shreveport. And Shreveport seemed like the ideal place. So when he moved, I came with him. And... Uh, it was just around the time I was graduating high school, moved to Shreveport, Louisiana. It was real culture shock. You know, it's nothing like New York. New York is almost exactly like what you see in the movies. I know you watch the movies and it seems so over the top, but that's what New York is. It's, it's moving at 100 miles an hour and everything is going fast. And you come down here to Shreveport and you're in the South and things are just, they're just a bit slower. People are a bit calmer. You ask people how you doing, and they tell you. <laughs> it's, it was so different. Uh, so I decided that you know I need to go to college, you know, and uh, I ended up at Southern, and Southern was amazing. It was an amazing experience. It was, it was like nothing I ever experienced before. You know, everybody was so welcoming. It was, it was that whole Southern hospitality thing, in a university. You know, it was like. It was like, you know, being in a small neighborhood where you know everybody and everybody knows you. It was a wonderful vibe. I learned a lot. I was, uh, I was a student under a professor named Mr. Daniels. He's the one who taught me how to paint. He introduced me to a whole world of different things. Because at the time, I just wanted to be an illustrator. Illustrator. I just wanted to draw comic books, really. <laughs> that's, that's, that's what I really loved. I really loved doing comic books, but he opened my mind to a whole new world of different things. So what I want to do with my classes, I want to teach some basic technical skills for painters. It's, just, it's one of those things that, you know, a lot of painters don't really get or they don't really have. Because a lot of times, artists, we're really self-motivated. We just pick up a paintbrush and we start to work and we start to do a lot of things. And then we find out that we're, we're lacking a little bit in the, the fine technical skills. I, I can't really teach somebody how to be an artist, but I, I can definitely teach them how to sharpen their skills. You know, just there are very little subtle things that you can teach an artist that will make a, a tremendous difference in, their, difference in their artwork. Like just the little technical skills, like learning about the paintbrush. We're going to learn some, some stuff about that. We're also going to learn about just basically how to get the paint on the canvas. Like the way I paint, the canvas is completely flat. There's no depth to it at all. And you can't really see that many brush strokes. And people oftentimes ask me, how do I you know, get such a look from acrylic paint? I'm gonna show them how to do that. I'm also gonna show them how to put these skills together and uh, to make a portrait. We're gonna be making a painting of Brianna Taylor. So we're gonna go through all the steps and we're gonna figure out how it's actually done. I really enjoyed working the Grandma State University 
and Susla um, HBCU Homecoming Experience. Um, it was a wonderful committee. I appreciate um, Pam Atchison and Shreveport Regional Arts Council for including us. I really enjoyed working with my partner at Grambling State University, Dr. Rodriguez Davis. Um, this was a rewarding experience in the fact that it allowed me to get to know new Grambling alum and get to know their art. And when I say art, I mean their musical capability as well as their visual and performing arts abilities. Um, it also opened my eyes to the actual HBCU experience, being that I did not come from that experience, but I feel like I have, um, after getting to know the people that were involved in this project, I've kind of um, been thrown into this HBCU experience and understand why people enjoy going to um, an HBCU and the experience that they get from it. I'm also looking forward to the number of students that we will be able to recruit thanks to this project going forth and looking forward to what it's going to do for HBCU uh, participants, uh, alumni, as well as incoming HBCU students in the future. People. My experience with Homecoming 2020 has been a wonderful journey, a memorable journey, and uh, actually new possibilities to um, creating ways to present performing arts. I have um, the six classes that I actually had to facilitate were just a part of who I was and who I am and uh, it was a, a wonderful uh, recalling of uh, recollecting of uh, the music that I have presented all of these years in my um, career. Uh, actually, really a full circle. You may say coming full circle with my artistry. And it's just been not only a wonderful uh, opportunity, but just a blessing in disguise because I've had to use uh, technology in a way in which uh, I've never uh, had to and it was um, amazing to actually have that opportunity to share with so, so many people uh, in the universe virtually so that was new to me and um, but I have learned quite a bit um, music and art it's so important. It is a bridge to S to uh, academics, and um, and just these uh, twelve weeks, we have been able to bring uh, the arts alive, and it made all the difference. And I am just so happy to represent uh, Southern University's report as a uh, product of that um, learning environment, and so in. Uh, to also to show the possibilities of um, what you can and who you can be. Turn the show over to Mr. Kababi Bea. Mr. Bea. Uh, I am a graduate of Gramlin 95. Uh, I'm a product of the school. It has so much to do with my career. Um, I'm a very proud alumni, and not just of Gramlin, but just enjoy saying I'm from an HBCU. So. Um, it's an honor to be on here, and I look forward to sharing whatever I can with While you guys. There, I was born Clifford Bernard Miskell Jr., and somewhere in the in the scheme of things, I decided to call myself Sea Baby, and that was what I was going to sign my work with. So Sea Baby is how I signed my work for two years, and then the counselor at Belleville Area College where I graduated, she had a relationship with Grambling State University and they were recruiting students from the area and she asked those of us in uh, that would hang out in the quad um, if any of us would be interested in uh, entertaining the idea of going to Grambling and I, I said sure, you know, it didn't require me to take any tests or anything just based on my grades and my interests. So I said I was down. And I came across Rat Pages magazine and I looked under the credits and it said Alan Gordon as editor. 
in chief. I don't know if he's editor in chief, but he was he was the, he was the main he was one of the main cats. Back then it was all snail mail, you know there was no email or none of that. So I put a portfolio together and I mailed it to him, and I heard back from him, and they decided to give me for an entire year. It was then the RPM section, the album or record of the month, and I did that for a year. And within that year, I got a call from Chris Lighty of Violator Management. And again, I wish I was at my studio so I could show you these things. But um, you can Google, and it's so weird to say, but I mean, I've been doing this 25 years. I should be used to it now. You can Google my name and Violator, and you'll be able to see the cover. But, you know, on the cover was Busta Rhymes, Missy Elliott, LL Cool J, and, you know, to this day, I still get people who, you know, love that album. They remember that album. They always wonder who did that art. And, you know, that and was me. Um, this thing with Prince happened. Um, 90, 19, so I graduated in 95. And as I think about it out loud, it really wasn't that big of a time gap. Um, 99, 98, 99. Uh, this woman contacted me and another gentleman and said that Prince was coming to Illinois to do a show and so this place called the Dignity House had a gallery and the two of us hung our work and you know they hung our work on the whole notion of you know Prince is doing a show and he's going to donate food here and you never know he might come by and see you work and if he sees something likes it but some time passed and I heard from Prince's people and they were like you know, I didn't, we didn't know they videotaped the show and they showed him the work and he saw three of my paintings that he liked and he purchased those. And a year later, his people called again and said he wanted to see if he had any more work available. And I sent him some more photos and he bought five more pieces. And one of those became the Rainbow Children album cover. And that's cool because that got my name all over the world. On the teaching you know, thing is I, I really don't think about what I do. I just work, so I'll think about this process as I go. And so, right here, I just got um, an image of a baby holding its own foot, and just for lighting. But I'll just show you how I approach it. And whether a small canvas or a wall, I really treat everything the same. But I learned by doing a portrait once at a school, and I was struggling with getting the likeness and getting it all to fit and work out. And somewhere in there, I just started putting it in shapes and it started to go a lot quicker. I stopped thinking about it as the subject it was and just started thinking about it in lines and breaking it down to simple forms and then slowly adding the detail as I went. So the homecoming experience, uh, when you say the word experience, it has been an experience for me. Uh, I'm not a graduate of an HBCU. Uh, I did attend Southern University of Shreveport. I took a couple of classes uh, during my undergraduate years. Uh, but as I have worked now at an HBCU, Southern University of Shreveport, over the past eight years, I have learned that when we talk about students coming in needing a family atmosphere, uh, that that is something that we provide uh, at Southern University of Shreveport. And as I've been working with Gramlin, uh, individuals at Gramlin, they have that same uh, kind of motto, that same kind of feeling, uh, that when students come in, we need for them to have that family atmosphere in order for them to be successful individuals. We want to take them from where they are and take them to where they need to be. Uh, as I said, this has just been a learning experience for me. Uh, I have been able to meet and hear about some people in this community, in the Shreveport community, that I had no idea existed. And, you know, to have hosted a master class with one of the individuals who painted the mural on the side of the AT&T building and, and sitting there and watching him and learning from him, knowing that he's a Southern University of Shreveport graduate uh, and just share, him sharing his talent with us. Uh, it's just been a rewarding experience for me. As, a, as an educator, lifelong learning is important to me and I'm still learning and it's been great. We did, uh, as you mentioned, talk about music specifically gospel music, focusing on three points. Uh, the vocal uh, aspect of it, uh, the artistry part of it, and then the uh, sound and technology part of it. We had uh, Jerry Mayton, 
of Grambling State University graduate, who is what I consider the one of the most phenomenal vocal clinicians in the country. It's excellent. And then we had Jay Williamson, I believe he's season seven winner of Sunday's Best, who is uh, wonderful in uh, vocal aptitude. He can do all kinds of vocal acrobatics. And then Alex Johnson, um, who's a wonderful sound engineer, singer himself, writer, does it all. The song is called Good Times. It was approached by uh, Rashonda Spears, Fred, uh, who uh, was wonderful and, and, and pulling some things together. And she said, Sonia, uh, we're going to do something that's um, a musical tribute. You know, Fred, I just kind of thought about my experience at Grammy. And those were some really, really good times that I had, being a member of the famed Grambling State Tiger University Marching Band, the choir there, the Grambling State University Voices of Faith. And one of the highlights of, of my tenure there, one of them is so many, was marching under Professor Conrad Hutchinson, then being able to walk the ground shoulder to shoulder with Coach Eddie Robinson, both, both of you now gone on to be with the Lord. but. Though they were legends, and if I'd had the opportunity and understood that I was walking with greatness, I would have taken so many pictures. And then Isaac Greggs and, hey, oh, you know, if there was nothing like the Bayou Classic, Pete Richardson, I mean, it's just an experience. And so those experiences combined, and, you know, going to class, going to what we call the cab and on the yard and, you know, uh, uh, Hitting that exit 81, you know, just memories, memories, memories. You know, the trash talking, but it's all in love, it's all in fun. You know, those the Southern being the actual super glue of this state as relative to HBCUs. And so the song just came together. It just came together. And like you said, and it's amazing that you would say that it had an old school feel with a new school kind of spin, you know. And um, my daughter sings, and I'm like, okay, she knows how to give me what I hear in my head without wearing me out. And then Alex, of course, was the go-to guy. I said, you know what I like. We've worked together in the past. Let's pull this together. Fred, it took about mm, maybe a little over an hour. You know, crafted the words, uh, gave them to him. He put the music to it. I gave him a, a kind of a skeleton of what I needed it to sound like. And then he was able to bring that uh, that vision in my head to reality. My master class was on the history, significance, and impact of historically black colleges and universities. And I had the esteemed pleasure to have Dr. N. Joyce Payne as the guest presenter or the guest conversationalist, if you will, during that master class. Dr. N. Joyce Payne is the founder of the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. She knew that public HBCUs needed an advocate. When she started the Thurgood Marshall College Fund, she was an executive for the Association of Public Land Grant Universities. And she used to watch what was happening in terms of advocacy and the distribution of funding in Washington, D.C. And realized that while you had the UNCF, that did advocacy on behalf of the private HBCUs, you did not have major advocates going to Capitol Hill saying this is what we need for public HBCUs. Once she had her concept and design down, she went to the Supreme Court to get the signature of Thurgood Marshall to be able to use his name and his likeness herself to be able to start the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. So even if you go to tmcf.org to this day, her name is the only one listed as the founder of the Thurgood Marshall College Fund. This homecoming experience has been crazy. Usually homecoming is trying to get on campus on game day and not being able to do that unless you show up at like five o'clock in the morning trying to get on the Gremlins campus because people are already set up actually start setting up on you know the Friday before, Thursday before, the Wednesday before, you get alumni showing up to come to the tour buildings and to reconnect before everything gets started. This you know event has been different because it hasn't really been terrestrial. We've been doing the virtual thing. And you know, the idea of the HBCU artist homecoming 
uh, allowed us to, number one, identify a segment of the HBCU experience that doesn't often get talked about a lot, and also deliver it and present it to people who might not normally be able to experience it in a way they wouldn't necessarily be able to think about experience it had it not been for COVID-19. So we've had a chance to, you know, pioneer something in a way that is unique, not only for this area, but also for the institutions that we represent, you know, Southern University at Shreveport and Grambling State University. And in particular to highlight what is great and what is, you know, familial about the visual and performing arts experience at both institutions. You know, the, the fact that we have something wonderful that happens at Southern and at Grambling that people need to know about and need to talk about as much as they talk about everything else when homecoming rolls around every year. Yes, I know. They did a film in two days, two days, which does not surprise me because that uh, if anyone can do a film in two days, it's certainly Dr. Sharon Green. Oh, then I've ever expected he he's done more than I've ever expected he'll do more. Um, and to just touch, you know, we've touched. We've touched in a lot of good and positive ways. One of my favorite songs says, if you touch somebody's life, you'll be surprised how soon that same touch will come back to you. I also know Jerry Maiden, who is the guru for voices and music and the like. The boy is absolutely awesome. And He's quite talented, so I, 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 you know, I know him, and he know a lot of people, you know. So with us together, it, it's, it was just wonderful to get and be able to bring those people who I know I've taught. The little boy, his parents come from the Cooper Road. And somebody said, "Can anything good come from the Cooper Road?" You know, um, to touch all of those people, and so touch people, you make a difference, people will give back to themselves and to the community. So this has been an awesome experience. I truly believe with my whole heart, if we work from a point of strength, then the arts program at GSU and at SU will truly make a difference in the lives of the citizens and of the students we serve. It was a great and wonderful experience, and I'm truly proud to have been a part of it. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, glad to be back at Gram uh, at Gramlin and in, uh, in Shreveport. Uh, I spent a lot of time uh, after high school in that state, and. Uh, have some very fond memories of uh, Shreveport uh, uh, playing with the uh, Magnificent Sevens uh, and the Soul Brothers, the band we had, and uh, eating at that great restaurant that Freeman and Harris. I always tell people that's the best food I ever had in my life, you know. Uh, whenever I see somebody from Shreveport, I always bring that up and they just, they, the eyes just uh, start twinkling and everything. 
Um, as I said, I, growing up in Mobile, Alabama, uh, we my band director had a hotline uh, with Gramlin. Uh, everybody that finished from Mobile, uh, Williamson High School automatically got a scholarship to Gramlin if they wanted to. And then after uh, college, I went moved to St. Louis and I studied with Susan Slaughter. And Susan Slaughter was the first female principal trumpet player in a major orchestra. I uh, studied with her for two years. That was a very good experience. In fact, she uh, she got me my job at Howard, you know, because I think uh, somebody called her and asked her about me. And she told them, you all better hire him. Uh, what 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 type of trumpet? What model trumpet do you have? Uh, this is a Yamaha. Yeah, Yamaha one three five. Okay. Uh, and what size mouth, and what size mouthpiece you play? This is a seven C, the King seven C. You know, when 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 somebody asks you uh, what kind of horn you have, you don't supposed to look at it. You supposed to already know that. You know that. I, no, uh, I was looking I at. I understand. I understand. I would like that too. I would like that too. And somebody asked you, uh, somebody asked you what, what size shoe you wear. I don't know. Let me look at it. You see, <laughs> you know, I wear a ten and a half. You know, I was like that. Still too fast. Still, still too fast. Bum 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 da da bum 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 da da da. Still too fast. I'm gonna tell you exactly why I was put there. Hold the horn. It, it, it belongs. It belongs right like up, up, up on top of this. I accomplished everything I wanted to accomplish with my master classes. What I wish could have happened more was those students um, logging in so that they can hear the history. A lot of our students don't know and understand their history, so they don't understand their path. And so we make a lot of times bad decisions and choices because we don't know our history. And that's relevant in any area of our life. So the beauty in that though, is that they'll have a chance to go back and click on and to look at and see some things. So our master classes, um, they were just just great, great to share information. And I'm one of those people, um, I've been doing production, I can say my whole life, but on a professional level, um, close to 10 years. So I don't feel like I know everything. So even in some of those classes, uh, we had Mr. Fred Moss, who is interviewing right now. He, he chimed in on some awesome things that I even learned from. So I view a master class as that's just an opportunity for me to lead the conversation uh, and to talk about what I know and my experiences, but then also to listen in and to hear other experiences and other suggestions because we know with the creative arts and with visuals and with singing, there are so many different ways to do it. Of course, there are some technical rules that we kind of have to follow, but at the same time, there is so much um, room for you know creating and so much room for making things your own. So the master classes were great time to shell out some information, but also just to connect with our community, with our arts community, and just to shed more and more light on why the arts are so important. And I've lived my whole life through the arts. I've been blessed to where um, I make a living off of the different type of art styles that I uh, that I do. So it was just great to be a part of the master class. Of course, it was a humbling experience because even though I've been doing this a while, um, I think of myself, I, I, I know that I know what I'm doing, but to think of myself as a master, that was humble, that humbling that even someone else would even think of that. So uh, I'm just excited for what's to come even after this four, first 2020 uh, course of homecoming. Whenever we're doing a project, and this being a documentary, it's always necessary to have some documentation. And with that, we were able to come together to talk about what we had done and whether or not we had been successful with our endeavors. And as a result of that, there were some other additional things that grew out of it. So in a nutshell, we were very successful in terms of the work that we were doing. And part of an outgrowth was that we are now going to showcase this exhibition at Gremlin State University. 
Southern University, Shreveport, along with uh, reaching out to these artists and we're going to be doing a follow-up with them uh, on a continuous basis and also reaching out to students and having these artists, both visual and performing artists, to work as mentors with these students at both universities. We accomplished our mission. In fact, it was greater than what we had anticipated and we, were had, we had real concerns initially because of the pandemic, but the final product ended up being even greater than what we had anticipated. So to that degree, we were very successful with that and we look forward to the next phase because those individuals who were a part of it, the visual artists, those who were doing the workshops, all felt the need to continue with the project and not let it just die on the vine.